Hello, welcome to another BSG expanded video. In this video, we're going to be speaking about zero touch provisioning in SD branch site. We're also going to be speaking about one touch provisioning and the difference between the two, but we're not going to go into too much detail on one touch provisioning in this particular video. We're also going to walk you through how to zero touch provision a switch and an access point at a branch site. So let's hop into the whiteboard. On our whiteboard here, we have an Aruba central icon and we have two gateways. Before we speak about zero touch provisioning or one touch provisioning, I want to make sure that we have some alignment as to where your final configuration comes from and what zero touch provisioning is and what one touch provisioning is. Your final configuration is going to come from Aruba central, regardless of if you're using one touch provisioning or zero touch provisioning. Zero touch provisioning generally means that you plug the device into an internet router that has access to the internet. You get the DHCP address, it grabs its configuration from Aruba Central and touch nothing, just plug it in, grabs its configuration and it goes. One touch provisioning generally means that you have to get onto the console, do some manual configuration to get that IP address configured, and then you connect into, let's say, an MPLS circuit, and then that has a internet drop from that MPLS circuit out and then it goes up to Aruba Central and grabs its final configuration. Now let's kind of talk about the nuances of ZTP and one touch provisioning on the gateways. And one of the things you need to be aware of is this orange port here. And it's on all gateways, all form yeah. factors, it doesn't matter. But this is gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1. On a 4 port gateway, a 12 port gateway, doesn't matter. 0 slash 0 slash 1 is the one touch provisioning port. And that means if you plug in a regular home router, whatever you're using to get DHCP into that port. It's not running a DHCP client, so it will never ZTP if it's plugged into that port. But you can use any other port to do ZTP. And you can use 0 slash 0 slash 2, 3, 4, 5, it doesn't matter. It'll get DHCP and grab its configuration from Aruba Central. Now, when you're doing one touch provisioning, the only thing you need to be aware of is generally you need to connect in through the console. So you connect in through the console, you configure an IP address on that device, and then you plug it up into your MPLS circuit, for example, and then it'll go up and grab its configuration from Aruba Central, like we defined a little bit earlier. So with that being said, how do you configure the rest of the branch or ZTP the rest of the branch? Before I talk about ZTPing the rest of the branch, let's recap ZTPing just the gateway. So we have two circuits here. We have a private circuit, it's MPLS in this example. And then we have an internet circuit. So we're going to connect up to that internet circuit, get DHCP, get onboarded, and get the rest of our configuration. You can also connect up to this MPLS circuit and have your configuration for this port, oops, have your configuration for this port right here in your final configuration within Aruba Central. So then you get your configuration by plugging into your internet, and then you get your MPLS config by getting your final configuration from Aruba Central. So you don't need to do anything with the console on this device to one touch provision it. But what about your switches and your APs? So let's tackle this single switch first. At your branch, when you were doing ZTP, you want to have L2. So in this example, we have L2 on this link right here, and that's trunked down to this switch. And this is generally going to have your management VLAN be the untagged VLAN passing DHCP down to this switch. And then the switch's configuration within Aruba Central will be a template. And templates are just easier to create a bunch of different templates for switches, and it makes your ZTP process a lot easier, especially for branch. As you could imagine if you have a bunch of retail stores or something like that, and you want to spin up a bunch of different sites, it's a lot easier to do that with a template group rather than using a UI group for switches because there's some final configuration options that you generally have to do if you use a UI group. So what's going to happen? That management VLAN is passing DHCP down to this device. It's going to get DHCP and you can use any port on the switch. It could be the management port. It could be inline. It doesn't matter. It'll still get onboarded. It'll grab that template configuration and then plop it onto the switch and it's done with its configuration. Pretty simple. When you're doing a stacked switch, the thing to keep in mind is you need to stack your switches before you connect them to central. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to have this branch gateway connect to this first switch and then try to do the stacking. What will happen is this switch will actually get some configuration from Aruba Central 
And then once it gets that configuration, it's not in a default state anymore. So you can't use the auto button press to stack these switches automatically. So that's one thing to be aware of. Don't plug this in initially. You just want to plug in your stacking ports, which you're going to use the auto stack ports, which can be 25 and 26 on 24 port switches. And then it's going to be 49 and 50 on 48 port switches. You're going to plug those up and those are the specific auto stack ports. And then there's a button press method that you can use to automatically stack these switches. All of this is detailed in the VHG deployment guide for how you stack these switches and get them ZTP'd. So once the stacking is complete, that's when you need to plug in this connection from the gateway. And again, you have that management VLAN coming down, passing DHCP to the switch, and then it's going to go up, grab its template configuration. And then from there, it'll be onboarded. Pretty simple. In that template configuration, you need to identify all your VSF members. So if you have two member stacks, three member stacks, etc., in that template configuration, you need to say VSF member one, two, three, etc., for whatever number of members are in that. Stack. And then finally, we have the AP down here. So this AP is going to have that management VLAN passed down to it. And the AP is going to reach out, grab to central. It's going to grab its configuration, and then it's going to be done. What you want to use for your AP is going to be a UI group within Aruba Central. So the switches are template group, APs are UI group, and your gateways are also UI group. And again, all of this is detailed in the VSG deployment guide as well. So you'll see UI groups for gateways, you'll see UI groups for the APs, and you'll see template groups for the switches. That's how you would ctp a branch site so first you're going to connect up let's actually clean up a little bit so this is a little cleaner so first thing you're going to do connect up this gateway to the internet it's going to grab its configuration from Aruba central and that's going to have the connection for your mpls then you're going to plug in your switch your single switch or you probably would stack this these pair of switches and then you'd plug in both at the same time but point b you'd Plug in your switches at this one. In this case, it would be after it's stacked. And then you're going to plug in your APs. And it's going to grab a DHP address. Can reach out to central, grab its configuration. Same here. Reach out to central, grab its configuration, get onboarded. And then your APs are going to grab its configuration and reach out to Aruba Central. Pretty simple. Moving on to a next scenario. How do you do a redundant branch? What's What do you do here? So starting at the gateways, if you have a redundant branch, and one gateway has access to the internet and the other one has access to an APLS circuit, for example, usually what you're gonna wanna do is connect the, this first gateway up to the internet, make sure it gets its configuration, and then you'll connect this other device up to the internet and make sure it gets its configuration. So that's one way you could do it. Alternatively, you could also just plug in the single gateway and then just wait for the other gateway to get its connectivity all these switches to be up and that stuff, but to get connectivity through here and then onboarded through the management VLAN from this other gateway. But it's far more common and simpler to just connect up to the internet directly and then have this device get its IP address. But it is an option that you can do. The other thing that we didn't talk about is what do you do if you want redundancy? What if I want some lags, which we have here? Well, in the case that you have lags, what you want to do is you want to have connections from one stack switch to one gateway. So one connection here, and one connection here. So you have the redundancy between boxes, and then you also have the redundancy between the links, which is what this is showing right here. So you have them across both devices, but it's one connection going here, and then you have another connection going here. And what this gives me is redundancy across two devices. And then it also gives me redundancy across two links. Now, the thing to be aware of is the gateways. You don't want to run LACP on them to, in order to do this because your switches will never be able to, to onboard because your gateways are going to try to do LACP and negotiate it. And it's going to fail and it's going to put these ports here into a blocking state. So then your switch will never be able to onboard. What you want to do is have your switches and their template have LACP fallback enabled 
and then LACP enable on their links. And what that'll do is it'll actually block one of these links, this, and then you'll have the connectivity going up across to this gateway and the connectivity going up across to this gateway on one of the links, but it's actually blocked from here, this standpoint. That's what you want to do to, in order to be able to onboard your gateways. Eventually you do want to have LACP configured on your gateways, but in order to ZTP them, this is what you would need to do. And then from the rest of the branches perspective, you just do the same thing that we discussed before. So you're just going to have your management VLAN trunk down to the single gateway and then your AP, and then your site is onboarded up and running. So to recap what we have to do here to get this site up and running or done at site. Let's clean it up one more time again. We're going to have one gateway connected up to the internet. It's going to grab its configuration. I would plug this other gateway up into the internet, make sure it gets its configuration. It's not going to be running LACP across these two links here. We're going to stack these switches. Then we're going to connect our uplinks. The switches are going to grab its configuration. It's going to be running LACP fallback, which is going to fail one of these links. So we fail these links here so we don't cause any issues. And then once this stack of switches has this configuration, it has management VLAN chucked down to the last switch. And then it's going to grab its configuration from central. And then our AP is going to do the same. And that's how we would CTP the site. And that concludes another VH expanded video. In this video, we spoke about ZTP, one touch provisioning, the ports you should use on the gateway, what you should use when onboarding a switch and what you should use when onboarding a AP and the process of onboarding an entire branch site. Thank you for joining and catch you on the next one.